Welcome again to my accounting tutorial where I translate technical topics to a storytelling version, sort of. Now, we are already at the episode 35 of this series and today we're going to talk about the loans receivable accounting, okay? So in the past episode, I told you that there are details that are needed so that you'll be able to account and record the loans receivable transaction and other related transactions from the beginning to the end of the maturity term. And these details are, first, the principal. Next is the nominal interest rate and the interest dates, of course. And then we have the maturity term and the origination costs received from the borrower, which are normally considered advanced deductions from the proceeds that the debtor will receive. Now, these things are normally found in the loan agreement. So, Whereas these two, this direct origination cost and the effective rate are not. But even so, you still need these two. Okay? So in today's video, let's make a sample problem by means of putting other details. Like this one. Baby G Bank, the creditor, loaned money to BBM, the debtor. So the details are, principal is 5 million. The nominal interest rate is 10% payable annually every December 31. So furthermore, the maturity date or the maturity term is 4 years and as per policy for example, BBG is to deduct in advance 5.5% origination cost from the proceeds to be released to the debtor. So that 5.5% is 275,000 if converted into amounts. So the direct origination cost is 44,779 and now we have the effective rate which is still unknown but we are sure that it is very different from this nominal rate because the loan receivable account is not already equal to the principal amount because of these two origination costs present okay so what do you need you need to compute the effective rate through interpolation Now, since we already have the sample problem, let's try to account the loans receivable, okay? So, I know that I said that you need to interpolate first so that you'll get the effective rate. Actually, guys, that's true. But even without the effective rate, you can already make an initial entry. So, that entry is debit, loans receivable, and then credit cash. So the problem is how much? And I told you earlier and in the past episode that the loan receivable account should be the principal amount minus origination costs received from the borrower. Because again, this amount is normally deducted in advance by you as the creditor. So you need to deduct that from your receivable account because it's very unfair and it's very illogical if you will say that your receivable is still the whole principal amount even though you have already deducted the origination cost from the proceeds to be given to the debtor. And of course, I also told you that the direct origination cost must be added. It's because this is one of your cost or one of your cash outflow aside from the proceeds that you're going to give the debtor. Okay? So now, 5 million minus 275,000. Again, that is 5.5% of this 5 million plus 44,779 equals 4,069,774. So that's the amount that you're going to use in this journal entry and that's the beginning amount of the timeline now the problem is that you cannot proceed with the timeline because of the lack of effective rate so you need to get it first so how do we do that of course first you need to realize first that the debtor has to pay two types of liabilities so number one is the principal liability of the debtor which is 5 million and that is to be paid at the end of the fourth year and then 
The second type of liability is the interest, which is 10% of the principal, which is 500,000. Why? Because supposedly, you need to get the present value of this too to get the initial amount of your receivable. So, how do we do that? Of course, by means of multiplying it with 1 plus i raised to the power of negative 4 for the principal and 1 minus 1 plus i raised to the power of negative 4 over i for the interest. Okay? Now, in this problem, the present value is already given. And again, that's 4,769,774. So, the ones missing is the effective rate. So, this I here in these formulas. So, now, what do you need to do is to have a trial and error, and of course, interpolation, to get the effective rate. Now, since... I want you to try getting the effective rate. I want you to pause this video and try solving for the effective rate on your own. So if you want a guide, I have a video tutorial on the interpolation process in this series. So specifically, that's episode 7 to 11. So don't worry because the episodes are very short, just like this one. So if you wanted to check on the whole playlist, the link is on the description below. So... I'm going to cut this video now to keep this short. So please try getting the effective rate and let's check if you got it in the next episode. So now if you are interested to know more, then please click like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to be updated on my next videos. And remember that even though there are no shortcuts in learning some accounting topics, there is always an easy way to understand. So thank you for watching and see you on the next one.